Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I will show you how you can make a real-time tic-tac-toe game with the help of Socket.io. So let me show you. So as you can see on my screen, I have opened two tabs to represent two different devices and you can enter your name in each device. So let's enter a name. So in the first, in the first tab, I will write user1 and you can see there is a button called search for a player. So let's press it. And you can see a loading is appearing and it will search uh, until other player is there or not okay so let's write a name in this new tab here i will write here user 2 let's click on search and see what will happen here so as you can see here the game opens and you can see the your name and opponent name also so in this first window first tab here you can see your name is user 1 opponent is user 2 and in this one uh, your name is user 2 and opponent is user 1 and uh, it is uh, also saying that you are playing as x and in this one you are playing as 0 so let's uh, play one more time so let's play a little bit and see what will happen so it is x turn as you can see here it is written x turn so let's click on this okay so as you can see here it this x appears here also and you cannot press uh, this button again because it is disabled now and uh, it is saying O turn so let's click here all right let's click anywhere so as you can see here the o is appearing uh, in both windows all right let's click x again then o and uh, let's win a game here so as you can see uh, x will like definitely win here so let's click here and as you can see an alert appears which says x won so and after two seconds the page will be reloaded so this is how you can make a real time tic-tac-toe and in this video we will see exactly how to do that and this is a part one of the video okay so in the it will be divided in two parts all right so let's start with the vs code and see how to make a game like this all right so i have opened my vs code and you can see the files are there so there is an index.html and there is an index.js which will be our server and there is a gif here which is a loading gif which we will be using okay so first of all before writing any code let's download some dependencies so come to your terminal and write npm i express then http then node mon and lastly socket.io so you have to install these four dependencies so make sure to install these before writing any code all right so after installing these let's come to our index.js and start the code okay so first of all let's make a server so i will write here const express is equal to require and i will require express so in this way you have successfully required the express and i will create another variable const app is equal to express then you uh, you can use this app to start your server i will write another const const path and then i will require it also so require path okay so this is used like to get uh, to give the path of your index.html to tell that you are using index.html then i will write one more variable and it will require http as the name is there http then lastly i will write a server here okay server and it will require server not server sorry socket.io so in this way uh, you have required all the dependencies here now now we'll write here const server is equal to http dot create server so in this way you are creating the server and telling uh, you are uh, like creating in http okay not https and you have to write app here which is your constant then I will make another constant here which is IO okay so this is important and then you have to write here new server 
and in the brackets just write server to give this value here okay this constant here oops all right then you have to write one more line like to use like to uh, successfully use the app constant so you have to write express dot static and you have to give the path of your html file all right so if you skip this part you will not be able to use the html file in your server and then inside this you just have to pass an empty string that's it so then let's uh, give the path of your index.html so i will write app.get here and for the default one which is slash i will write request dot response it will be an arrow function here okay and then i will return something i will return res dot send file here and then i will write index dot html that's it okay and uh, let's uh, also listen to the server so i will write server dot listen here and give the port number so you can write any port number i will write 3000 which is the default one then it will take an arrow function here and i will console log something i will write port connected to 3000 okay so it is a message to confirm that your port is connected or not so let's clear the terminal and start the server so to start it you have to write node mon and give index so this index is your js file hit enter and as you can see here the message is there port connected to 3000 and let's refresh our chrome here and you can see there is nothing here because uh, in our html file there is nothing so let's now create our html file so i will write the boilerplate here and uh, all right so let's first of all write an s21 tag which says tick tag to let's save it and see if it is there or not okay so let's refresh the page here and as you can see here it is working great all right so now let's write some more html code here so first of all i will create a div here okay and uh, i will give it a uh, i will style it later on not now then i will create a p tag and id will be user count here okay and in this uh, you are writing the name of the user so i will write here this and i will create a span tag just like that and in the span tag i will write user and in this span tag uh, we will write the name of the user then i will copy this down here and in this one i will write opponent okay so as the name suggests this one will give the username and this one will give the opponent name all right and in this one I will write here uh, instead of user count I will write opponent name count and uh, in this one I will write opponent name okay just like that then I will create a I will write a break tag here to give some space in between I will create another p tag give it an id of value count here so in this p tag we will uh, give the value whether you are playing as x or whether you are playing as o so i will write here you are playing as and i will create another span tag here okay span tag and in this i will give it an id of value so in this span tag you can write x or y so we will do that with the help of backend and javascript i will create another br tag here then i will write another p tag and this one will tell whose turn it is so it can be x turn it can be o's turn so i will write whose turn and then i will by default it will be x turn okay so in this game uh the first 
turn will be always for x all right so i'm writing here x then i will create a div here inside which i will create another p tag to give it an id of enter name so in this p tag uh, i am telling you to enter your name so i will write enter your name okay all right and uh, we have to give the input tag also uh, to like uh, enter the name so i will write here placeholder name then id name here and then let's say auto complete is off okay that's it then uh, let's create a button here uh, which is the search button okay which i have shown you earlier so i will write here button uh, give it an id of find because this button is used to find a player and inside this button i will write search for a player search for a player that's it then what i will do lastly i will give it an image of the gif here which is this one so this one okay i will write oops i will write image and in the src i will give the loading dot gif and uh, let's give it an id also so loading all right now let's create let's save it and see how it is looking right now let's reload the page here and so as you can see here it is looking something like this okay let me zoom a little bit all right so the only thing left in html part is our tic tac toe board okay so let's create the board which has uh, which will take nine individual buttons here i will write div and give it an id of a uh, big container here and inside this i will give another div here and give it an id of only count all right then in this div here i will create nine buttons so first of all let me just create a single button and uh, the id of this one will be btn1 and class will be btn and then you just have to copy this uh, nine times so let's do that you can see here i have written here a uh, buttons nine times and as you can see uh, i have given different ids also so let's see how it is looking in the here also so as you can see on the bottom it is looking something like this all right so let's write some css and make this page beautiful i will not show you how to do css okay because it will be very simple so let's do that so this is some basic css that you can do it on your own so let me show you what is the final result here so as you can see now this is our final result which is due to css script tag first of all i will uh, do the display none for some of the properties because by default you don't want to see this tic tac toe board until a player is there and uh, some of these also you don't want to see until you have find a player so i will write here document dot get element by id first of all i will write loading here because you don't want to see the loading all the time i will write style dot display is equal to none and then i will copy this couple more times here so who's turn let's save it and see how it is looking now let's reload the page and yep as you can see now it is looking very clean because by default you have you just want to see this okay enter your name tab and a button to search for a player all right so now let's require the socket io so so for that i will write a constant here i will write socket and is equal to io that's it in this way you have required the io the socket io and then you can use it then i will uh, create another variable called name here okay which will get a click function which is add event listener i will write document dot get element by id and the id was find the id of the button i will write add event listener click here it will take a function or right oops 
all right and inside this function first of all i will change the variable which is name which we have declared there i will write here document dot get element by id name dot value so it will take the name from this so whenever i will write here let's say user one here so it will take the name user one and store it in this variable okay so after that i will write here another document dot get element by id here which is user and i will change the inner text to name so i will also give the user name so in the u tag uh, it will display your name then i will write an if else statement so if the name is null or name is empty so in that case i will alert the player okay so i will alert it uh, oops i will alert and write enter a name okay because the name cannot be empty so i will write enter a name and why it is giving me an error okay so you have to write double equal to here all right now it's fine and in the else part so if the name is fine if the name is not empty i will emit something so this is uh, the main function or uh, in socket io to emit something so what emit means you are sending a data to your backend all right so this emit means to send a data so i will give this emit a name so i will name it find you can name it whatever you want and then it will take an object so that it can store the data i will name the object name and i will pass the data of name so in this way you are passing the name of the user to the backend all right and after that uh, after passing the name you just have to uh, write a get element by id and loading okay loading and then i will turn the display uh, back to block here so whenever someone will click on the button the loading will appear all right all right so i think uh, now we are almost done here now let's uh, try uh, let's write the code here also because you are emitting the name you are sending the name but you have to get here also for that you just have to write io dot connection here okay connection and it will be a function here or uh, not that so you have to write io dot on and in in this you have to write connection you can write anything okay and it will be an arrow function here which takes an argument of socket it will be an arrow function and here you have to write all the socket io code so uh, as you can see here i am emitting a code here which is find so to get that name uh, you have to write socket dot on so this dot on is used to get the value and this emit is used to send the value so i hope you get my point here then i will write the same name which is find otherwise it will not work so make sure to give the same name and it will be an arrow function as well now uh, i can simply use this e tag to get the name and first of all before writing more code i will create two arrays so first is array and then second will be playing array all right so these are two arrays here so i will to i will tell you what they mean all right so first of all i will write an if statement if e dot name is not equal to null okay so for if the name is not empty then only do these steps so what we are doing here i will write array dot push and i will push the name so what we are doing here uh, we are getting the name and we are pushing it in this array here in this way we will check if the array is full so, uh, if the array in the array if there is two players then we will connect them together otherwise we will not then here we have to write another if statement and i will write if array dot length is greater than equal to 2 so if uh, it is greater than or equal to 2 here 
then we will connect the two players so how we will do that first of all we will uh, make some objects here okay which we will be using later on in the part 2 video i will write p1 dot p1 object which will be object for the first player here i will write p1 name and this will be arrow 0 because the first player will be the first element in the array and p1 value here this will be x okay and uh, and then last one is p1 dot move so this p1 move will tell which button you have clicked so that it can change the button for the other player as well and i will just copy it down here for p2 object also so i will write p2 name p2 value and p2 move and i will write array 1 here and then instead of this x i will write o all right and then i will pass this object in a different object so i will make another object here and in this one i will write uh p1 okay so p1 will be equal to p1 obj and then p2 will be p2 obj so i hope you get my point here what i am doing here uh, this this code right here uh, will make more sense in the part 2 video okay so make sure to check that out uh, as well then what we will then what we will do then what i will do here I will push that object in playing array. So I will write playing array dot push and I will push this object here, right one. Alright, now what I will do after like you know after uh, like uh, connecting two players here, I will delete the two players from this array which uh, it which is connecting the two players. So I will write array dot splice so this splice method is to remove an element and i will write 0 comma 2 so it will start from index 0 and delete two elements okay so in this way you will delete the two names and uh, i think we are done with the uh, like index dot js part and one more line which is very important you have to write here io dot emit so as you can see emit is used to send a data so i will write here find okay uh, and uh, it will take an object here i will write all players and i will give the value of array so i will write playing array so in this way you are passing that playing array now you have to get that array in your index.html file so to get that in your index.html you have to write socket okay socket dot on because on is used to get the value so we are getting the value from the backend i will write find and then it will take an object here it will be an arrow function not object it is a parameter and inside this you have to write the simple javascript code not advanced here not socket io i will write here all um, let's say player array okay so all players array and this will be equal to e dot uh, what e dot all players okay so all players so as you can see here i have written here something and i am just uh, changing the display of these html files here html elements so the user can't it will be block the op name will be block uh, the loading will be none here the name will be done the find button will be also none and uh, the this here whose turn it will the inner text will be x turn here so this is some basic javascript okay and uh, now we have to uh, make some variables here i will write op name then i will write let value so i am writing these two variables here and to give the value to them i will make a constant which is 
found obj here okay so we will use that array because we haven't used that array yet i will write all players array dot find so this find function is used to find the object in an array or any value i will write object it will be an arrow function obj dot p1 dot p1 name so it will search uh it will search the whole array and also the object if uh, the p1 name inside the p1 object okay so if the p1 name is equal to uh what is equal to the name you have given earlier here so this one so i will write here in that one so for that i will write in uh, back ticks here name okay and i will write uh just copy this here and uh, i will write a simple of or and paste it here and i will do the same for p2 okay so if the name is for p2 or p1 then we can get the object from this found object and then you can use this found object so now what i will do i will write found object dot p1 dot p1 uh name here and then you have to give the same value which is this one so let me just copy that okay so let's copy that and paste it here and you have to write the ternary operator here so if uh, the p1 name is this okay so if the p1 name uh, is this one you have to give the value to the op name uh i will give the value of op name p2 okay so p2 dot p2 name and uh, if uh, this is not the case i will just uh, give the opponent name of p1 so i will just copy this down and do the same for value okay so i will write here value and this uh, value here okay and here also value and this uh, value here and then after writing these i will create a document dot get element by id 1 and in this i will write op dot name or to change the inner text so i will write inner text will be op name and i will do the same for value here and uh, now i guess we are complete with the connecting part let me just do one thing here what i will do i will console log something so i will console log all players array and in this way you will get to understand clearly all right so let's test it so first of all i will write here user1 and uh, let's click on search for player and as you can see here the loading is appearing so everything is fine till now uh, let's you write user2 and uh, if i just click on search for player so yep as you can see here everything is great and now let's uh, open the console and uh, let me just show you the array which i have told you to show all right uh so as you can see here, there is an array and inside this there is one object here okay so this one is p1 and p2 so in this p1 as you can see let me just zoom a little bit here so let me just do this all right so as you can see here in the p1 you can see the p1 name is user1 p1 values x and p1 move is empty because uh, you like we haven't started playing yet so after we started playing then the move will change and in the next part we will write the code so that the two players can play and we will also decide the winner okay so we will do that in the next part and as you can see this is working great till now so that's it for this video guys i will see you in the next part